A very good morning to every one of you and thank you for the invitation to come and share my experience, my U-turn with you all. I'm a television journalist with NDTV over the last 13 years and in the year 1996 I began my career as a lecturer in English. My mom is a teacher as Saravan said and I had teaching in my blood so I prepared myself to be a college lecturer, did my MA, MPhil and then got into teaching. I was doing pretty well as a teacher. Uh, at a very young age, I was uh, teaching well, if I can say so. I was publishing articles, participating in uh, regional and international conferences. I had come even to Anna University at one point in time for a paper. But after five years, I thought the growth was rather stunted. The work was not that challenging because I could go to the class and give a lecture without actually preparing. So that was the time I thought I wasn't really enjoying my job and I should really go towards where my heart is. During my school days, uh, we had very little exposure to television in terms of television news. All we had those days was the Friday's The World This Week by Pranoy Roy. Uh, we used to have his election analysis during election times. During the weekends, we used to watch this Veer Sangvi's Youth Panorama on Doodarshan, the only English program for the youth. And then we used to have Deepak Vora, who was a kind of a diplomat turned journalist who was anchoring the morning show those days. So that unconsciously had an impact on me to become a journalist at some point in time. But I was brought up in Salem. And you know, those days we didn't have internet, we didn't have that kind of an awareness. So I did have the interest, but we didn't have the knowledge, we didn't have the awareness how to go about it. So as I was teaching, there was also an opportunity to teach language skills to the postgraduate students of that college. We had a program called Masters in Media Communication and Management. So that took me one step further to be in some way associated with journalism. I used to write for magazines, journals, I used to have a magazine for the college. So in some way I was unconsciously or indirectly equipping myself to be in some form of writing or reporting, if I, if I can call so. So it was an English language which teachers conference I think in the year 2000 which I was attending as a as a faculty and there we had Jennifer Arul who was the then chief of bureau of NDTV in Chennai who was giving a lecture as a resource person so it was a casual meeting we exchanged cards and after two months I get an email from her saying Sam NDTV is launching a Tamil bulletin through Vijay TV it was called Star Vijay those days uh, we would like to have some of your students as uh, uh, journalists. It was the first batch in a college. We had just three students, so we sent one boy first. He was immediately chosen. They asked for one more. The second girl was sent. She was also taken. Then they asked for one more. So we had the last girl in the class who was also chosen. Then they, when they asked for more, I said, we don't have any students, but I can come. So that's when that U-turn I made from teaching to journalism. But it was a tough call, whether because it was for Tamil channel, uh, whether you accept or not, Tamil reporting is always seen to be one step below your English reporting. Whether you will be able to do a good job there, it's, it's a field where you have not had any experience. But with all those fears and apprehensions, I took a bold thing and said yes. So I was posted in Madurai. And it was then my career as a journalist began in 2000. It was a huge area I had to cover from Madurai. I had to cover the entire southern region of uh, southern Tamil Nadu, around 13 districts. Many questions, how would you cover? We didn't have the, uh, the video satellite technology which we have now to be able to instantly uh, cover. We had to rely on one flight from Madurai to Chennai at 12.40 in those days. If you miss that, that particular day's report or story will not make it. So sometimes we used to travel for two, three hours, getting up early in the morning, come back in six hours, but the time we spend for a story in that 
maybe Tirunelveli or somewhere near uh, around south would be just 20 minutes so that you'll be able to come back and won't miss the flight. So that was the time. We didn't have uh, this kind of high-tech internet facilities. We had only that slow line called ISDN lines. But that's how we slowly developed. And slowly I started enjoying the work. You meet a lot of new people. Every day it's a new issue. It's not something like you have a syllabus, you follow that. After a few years you become thorough on that. No. Every year you go with that tremor in your heart. Will I be able to do a good thing? Will I be able to do a good research and do a good story? New people, new issues. So that's something that kept you running, challenging every day, day in and day out. And then in the year 2004, NDTV launched its own English channel. At that time, we had a tie-up with Star News. NDTV was the content provider for Star News. And then in 2004, we launched our own channel. And that actually, again, I was lucky to be taken in for the English uh, stream. And then in 2006, I came. So what is that U-turn that was, for me, a crucial point to, for that bold step? Number one, yes, I didn't enjoy teaching beyond a point because it wasn't really challenging myself. It wasn't really making me to push beyond the boundaries. It was becoming a routine because the university curriculum wasn't really changing frequently. That was one call. But secondly, how did I really cope with the new thing? That is something a challenge. If you really enjoy your work, if you really have your heart, if you have the passion for any kind of new job, particularly when you're young, it's so easy for people to adapt ourselves to new uh, ways of uh, new jobs, new ways of uh, uh, doing things in a div and that was something which helps everyone. So if you're someone who has maybe you're, you're done engineering, you're preparing for self, yourself for a, a, a great career but at any point if you don't enjoy your work I think that's the time you have to ask yourself is it time for me to call quits? Is it time for me to realize what I enjoy doing? And should I find for openings? Should I find for opportunities in that? So I thought I'll just play a short clipping, a recent story to have you a better sense of what kind of work I do. And then I can just go through a little bit about the kind of challenges we face in my present work now. In dance, sterilized copper smelting plant in Tutikorin after imposing a 100 crore fine, but no relief yet for the plant. The Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board has ordered its closure after a gas leak. Sterlite denies the allegations. NDTV's Sam Daniel sent us this ground report on the plant's impact on the environment in the area. Twenty-third March, between midnight and six in the morning, thousands of critical residents wake up to a gas leak. The chimneys of Sterlite copper smelting plant release more than double the permissible amount of sulfur dioxide. Complaints of nausea, throat, and eye irritation pour in. <laughs> The Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board has shut down the plant, citing violations. Local people say they've paid a heavy price. During its initial years, the plant's liquid discharge polluted the soil and dust destroyed cultivation. Arsenic, environmentalists say, is 25 times the permissible level in the area and copper 10 times. Behind the sterilite plant, hundreds of tons of copper slag dumped, which over the last many years has drained into the groundwater table and has made water unfit for drinking in many surrounding villages. Once into the groundwater table, copper slag increases the hardness of water, which in several areas has touched 2,000 microgram per litre against the permissible 600 limit. The TDS is almost at 8,000 microgram per litre, almost four times the permissible 2,000. Iron is at 3.45 versus the permissible 1. In another case, the Supreme Court had recently overturned the Madras High Court's closure order. Uh, does this imply that uh, if you are rich enough to uh, settle, make settlements, you can be up to any kind of mischief and then you set right things by with your money and power? Promoted by the Vedanta group, the plant made Chitikurim at home 17 years ago after Maharashtra farmers chased it out of Ratnagiri. 
the company with the 18,000 crore turnover supplies 40% of India's copper requirement, besides jobs for around 4,000 regular and contract workers. Another 40,000 benefit indirectly as well. Doctors say there's a definite rise in respiratory complaints after Sterlite set up shop in Tutukuran. But there's no scientific research to prove. Because uh, there is no recorded estimation of blood levels of all these uh, toxins. There is no research. Sterlite authorities say the plant has achieved zero discharge now and that it complies with pollution control norms. We sell it industries will continue to engage with the state government of Tamil Nadu and the state pollution control board towards maintaining the highest standards of safety, health and environment in our operations. The district administration says it will go by government records and it has ordered a probe following fresh complaints by public. If it is found that it has been doing this missions uh, for quite long and this was also one such missions which they have not taken steps to uh, clear it, then definitely the closure will be ordered. It's a question of development versus public safety and damage to environment. With the Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board shutting down the plant, there is no relief yet for Sterlite. But for the Tamil Nadu government, it could be a tough political call. Outside the Sterlite plant in Tutukurin, with camera person Sukumar, Sam Daniel, Findy TV. Thank you for the video. So this is the kind of role I do now, from a confined environment in classrooms, to travel across the state to areas where we would normally wouldn't travel, meet people. The biggest joy, of course, is taking up the cause of the common man. Ask government officials, make politicians, bureaucrats accountable. And the biggest joy is when you get a telephone call, sir, you need a story, now there is some relief. The government has worked on that. There are villages which we have done stories on which didn't have power supply for the past 50, 60 years. They call with such gratitude saying that we have electricity now. So that kind of satisfaction and the way you somehow mold public opinion, maybe not directly but in a tacit way. There are challenges as well, how, for example, television news industry is not the same as it used to be, say, 15 years back. It's not the same enjoyable job it used to be those days. There's so much of competition, there is so much of uh, pressure to give stories quicker, so you don't have enough time for a good research. But these, again, as you gain experience, as you get yourself involved in any kind of profession beyond the point there is again a possibility for another U-turn. For example, I am not the same what I used to be 10 years back. Now for example, there is so much of challenge for more younger people. Uh, television channels want more younger people who can go faster, who can deliver things much quicker. So again, your role needs to be redefined to be changed. Maybe now the way people consume news is also changing. More and more people are getting news from mobile phones, from websites, than on watching television. So again, there could be a point which many senior journalists are already feeling now that they get slightly disillusioned. They find television news reporting at one level is not the same enjoyable job it used to be because sometimes because of competition, some trivial news or less important news makes make headlines. Not all of you will agree with that, but sometimes things change that way because of pressure you're not able to get enough time for a deeper research so things change and again we are at, a, at some point where you have to take a call whether you still enjoy the job as you enjoy 10 years back for example in my case again there are many people who think in terms of graduating to desks not from on the field reporting or to switch to new forms of reporting maybe for online uh, for the online uh, area to the new media or sometimes many also think whether experienced journalists should get back to teaching because for teaching journalism there is a dearth of experienced professionals so again in my ex in my case there is a phase where i'm un undergoing now whether Am I enjoying my job fully or should I 
rediscover myself again and think in terms of moving to areas which I would enjoy in a bigger way. So ultimately I would like to conclude saying yes there is a point where you may have to take a call whether you need to take a U-turn or not. The underlying question could be whether Am I enjoying my present job or is there something I would better enjoy? And there's nothing difficult which you may not be able to achieve if you have that kind of a desire and sustained hard work towards that. So with this, thank you so much for your time and hope that I made some kind of sense, if you may call it, on the U-turn I made and on possible U-turns maybe in the next phase of the next few years. Thank you very much.